Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Well, I guess we can start the meeting then. Yep. Well, let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, liberty, and justice for all. All right. So much for technology. <laughs> well, let's start our meeting here, seeing I have the agenda in front of me. Um, we need a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting. I make the motion. I so move. Um, approve the minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All right. Financial reports, Joe. Well, you should have uh, Accountant Gutsucker's uh, report for the month of July. And things were starting to improve in July in terms of our water sales. Um, we, uh, in terms of our residential sales, were <clears throat> pretty close to last year, within $2,100, which is not bad. Um, Sheboygan Falls and Kohler, well, Falls was actually up from last year, and Kohler was a little bit down, but overall, July came in looking more like a normal July than our prior months. However, year to date, we're still suffering from <clears throat> earlier uh, changes in water consumption. We're down about half a million dollars from 2019 revenues at this point in the year, and I don't think we're going to recover uh, that. I think we're just going to hold our own at that level, which, um, you know, isn't bad. There's nothing we can do about it. could be a lot worse. Um, see the return of, uh, on rate basis, dwindling, we're down to 1.26%. Um, Otherwise, the financials look strong and and normal. We do have a high cash balance, again, due to borrowing for the upcoming project in part, uh, and also delaying some expenditures, capital projects for this year due to COVID. Um, that's pretty much my summary of July financials. Anybody have any questions of uh, Joel on the financial reports? No, none from me. I don't. Not, not me either. All right. Moving on. Um, your report, Joel, superintendent's report? Well, in operations from uh, Bill over in the plant, you can see for July – Kind of tied into the revenue, uh, we we're only down about 4% from last year in terms of water pumped, pumped out of the plant, and that's not bad. Um, really can't complain about that. Uh, our year-to-date uh, average uh, so far is 11.1 million gallons a day. Uh, in 2018, we were at 13.2 million gallons a day, so we've we've dropped off a fair bit uh, in that figure. But again, that that's going to be reflected a lot by March, April, and May in particular of this year. Um, on July 22nd, we did pump 15 and a half million gallons. That's been our high to date. Um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we would see figures more like 21 or 22 million. But things have changed. Otherwise, in the plant, uh, it did seem like we had pretty cold water this year. I figure it's here somewhere, but the water temperature, I guess it was not all that different. 52 degrees on average for July. Last year was 46. I guess it's actually a little warmer than last year. 
Otherwise, in the plant, you see a, a range of maintenance. You know, occasionally we we have to do um, checks on the on the ultraviolet system on the sensors. Uh, that work has become pretty routine for the maintenance techs over there. Um, we did some uh, just a variety of operations in the plant as, as usual. I don't see anything really jumping out at me. Um, One thing I thought was interesting, Joel, was the electricity consumption for the office building. Yeah, what did you see there, Mark? Well, you're down quite a bit for electricity consumption for the office building. I assume that's uh, credit to our solar system. It is, yeah. It, uh, in terms of the kilowatt hours, it's down a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, dollars saved is, is not humongous, but the thing I like to keep in mind is that that's going to add up every month. It's not always the same amount, but every month for the next 20 years, the lifetime of that system, we're going to see that figure more like $1,000 or less instead of something more like $2,000. So it is adding up, and that's nice to see. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're right about that. My understanding is when the solar system reaches the end of its life, it's not like it, it shuts off. It just decreases in effectiveness. So it'll be producing electricity for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's all things. It's now up and running. We, we forget about it. It's just there doing its thing. We, we don't have any electric vehicles yet to charge on that system, but we did, uh, at your uh, suggestion, add that charging station, which we now have, and hopefully we'll use that in the future. You have to get that um, JAG converted over to electric. <laughs> yeah, we'll try. Either that yeah. or a, a Tesla, you know, those are out there too. Either that or we just could have put a sign out on on the on the street saying we have a charging station, whatever they're charging at festival, we could charge and have another in revenue stream. We could. Or maybe get a utility vehicle, one of the new Mustang Mach E's. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, they are making electric trucks, and our guys did even point those out to me. So who knows? Maybe one year we'll have a truck. Yep. But. Uh, That's pretty much the extent of operations and, and distribution. <clears throat> we had a very busy month with contractors and our own crew. A lot of activity on Geely Avenue with the uh, Dorner uh, company installing, uh, replacing Main there and getting ready to replace a bunch of lead service lines. Um, our newer uh, engineer tech has been mostly inspecting that project, so that's good that he can be out and in independent now. Um, down by uh, Rockline, we've also got work taking place with Vinton, getting rid of some really old water main and valves and hydrants. Uh, we did have a main break on Taylor Drive. Uh, that stretch of area just seems to have corrosive soils. That main is not that old, but we've had a number of breaks in that 16 inch pipe. Uh, and that one was uh, repaired by the crew. And I should say, uh, just to remind the board, a couple months ago, the board authorized the purchase of an electronic leak correlator, mm -hmm. a way to find leaks with, instead of a manual way that we used to use. And the crew members are very happy with it now. And they've been able to basically pinpoint leaks uh, just using the, the device. And that just saves so much time and, you know, their own labor putting these probes in and trying to listen and, and uh, not having to dig up pavement uh, and making a mistake. So that device has been well received by the crew. Excellent. It beats a divining rod, right? Uh, it does, usually, yeah. <laughs> Um, custom relations and fiscal, we had an active July as always. <clears throat> Many fewer people coming into the window. You know, 374 instead of 820 last year. 
Uh, more Dropbox payments, kind of making up for that. Um, fewer calls coming in, you know, a little bit less customer contacts. Um, of course, we're not disconnecting, so that tends to reduce a lot of communications in and out of the office. Uh, we did have two cross-connection inspections in, in, in commercial settings in the month. Um, we did start to replace some meters, uh, kind of more on an urgent basis than routine basis. Um, 2,700 visitors to our website. We got a lot of interest in our drone photos of the plant and of the solar system, solar panel system. And uh, we are using that $500 drone quite a bit. Were those uh, those pictures from our drone? They were from our drone, yes. Nice. We've got an ace pilot, Andy Wellman, that we send out on the toughest missions, and he's always come back. <laughs> And we are using it a little bit for gold deterrence also. That may not be legal, but uh, we <laughs> don't, don't like the drone either. I saw a uh, an article about a bald eagle that interacted with a Michigan DNR drone. The drone did not fare well. <laughs> <laughs> so the office is still staffed, but we are still staggering two people uh, per day uh, on the support specialists. Um, and otherwise, that's the extent of the superintendent's report. Yep. All right, I have a motion to approve the superintendent's report. So moved. I second it. In favor say aye. 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 All right, chair votes aye. Items previously held over for discussion, the raw water improvement intake project. Uh, we had another uh, 3D virtual walkthrough and made some additional comments on the project. Um, you know, these are things like they've got a pipe and a vault and we're trying to get them to extend the, an area where it's graded instead of a concrete floor over it um you know access issues that we're working through um we do have some site issues that are challenging we're trying to reroute two disc golf holes there um and we're also trying to provide security for the new area uh, so we're looking at a few options of fences and where these disc holes should go um, I'm hopeful we'll come up with a good plan on, on that. You know, one of the biggest challenges, if you're familiar with that site, there's a big hill there, and then it comes down pretty steep slope to the lake, and we're partly in that hill with the building, so there will be, you know, a retaining wall, and uh, part of the building will be, um, I don't want to say underground, but partly uh, the soil will come up a pretty high stretch of one of the walls. Um, so we're just kind of reviewing some of the structural issues with that. Um, the alternative is to put it closer to the lake and we've kind of preferred to, to protect it from the lake and, and deal with more with the hillside. And, um, so we're still working a little bit on that, but the project is coming together. I expect we're having another detailed review meeting next week, and then I'd like to sit down with some of our city colleagues and, and get any of their concerns about impact on the park, and uh, we do have impact on a large storm sewer down there as well. And then my hope is uh, next month we'll be able to give the board a little more of an update one thing we do have to uh, proceed with, um, in 2004, when we first, I think it was 04, uh, many years ago when we first envisioned this project, we went to the Parks Committee 
and the city granted the utility an easement to construct and operate a water treat uh, and water intake facility at that site in a particular area as we've come to design the actual facility and lay it out we've diverted a little bit from the easement area gone beyond it so to speak so we really need to to modify the easement that was agreed to those those years ago um, and, and that would take a formal request from the board to the city. Um, <clears throat> it's not a huge modification. I, I think uh, we would uh, take more of the flat shoreland out of the easement and put more of that hillside into it. So I, I think it's kind of for the public uh, betterment overall, but we would need approval to modify the easement uh, in a way. And at that point as well, the city did not want to sell land to the parkland to the utility uh, at, at all. And I don't think there's been any change with that. They would rather retain ownership and uh, provide an easement for this purpose. Would be required to put fencing up on the top of that hill? Well, the, the building uh, kind of nests into the, the su southern part of the hill, and we would have some fencing coming up the hill to meet a corner of the building. Yes. Okay. I, I mean, because you know, I can just see someone trying to shimmy down that or slide down that hill or whatever and end up on the roof of the building. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, you know, we also don't want a real ugly fence in a, in a nice park. So that's a little bit, a bit of a challenge. Right. Are, okay. are there any other questions on the details of the project that I'd be happy to provide? I'm not right at the moment. I'm good. Yeah, I guess I'd wait a little bit longer until we can maybe see something with a little bit more detail. On the sure. atmosphere and things like that, how it's going to fit into that area. Yep. I used to down in that area all the time when I was a kid, um, when the lion was still there and the zoo was still there before the Frisbee golf course. So, yeah. anyway, no, all we're, right. We're pretty much on schedule, and I think it's, it's been going well. Okay, good, good. All right, on to item number five one, uh, approval to transmit the utilities budget and our um, capital improvements programs for, actually there's six years here rather than five, but that's okay. I'm sure the city would like to see five, but we'll, we're giving them six. So. <laughs> yeah, we might've had a typo there, Jerry, but I'll. I'll uh... Uh, that's all right. I mean, they've got the numbers, right? Or they will get the numbers. Yes. This is pretty much the budget that we looked at the last meeting, right? There's not much in the way of change. Yeah, the only changes were uh, typographic uh, changes, no, no significant monetary changes. Anybody have any other questions? Any questions on the budget after we talked about it last month? Uh, no, sir. I don't. Not for me. All right, so then we need uh, a motion to Approve sending the RO to the council. Yes. I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll second I'll it. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. So it's up to you who decides <laughs> who seconds it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. On to number five two hydrant stripping and painting proposal. Well, was that motion also approving the five-year capital plan? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well noted. All right, the hydrant stripping and painting proposal, Joe? Yes, yeah, so um, each year we try to make progress keeping up with our fire hydrants. I did ask Dave McMillan to trim this item due to COVID budget impact. So instead of 400 hydrants, we're looking to paint 200. 
And we really only got one quote this year, but it was cheaper than the price for last year. Same spec. Same white primer? Yes. <laughs> the ghost hydrants. Yep. Put extra people on the phones to take the phone calls on that? Yes. <laughs> We're not painting hydrants white for per permanent. <laughs> Although it's not a bad look. Yeah, that was one of the things last year, right? We got several phone calls. Definitely. Yeah, okay. People notice. <laughs> Exactly. All right. We'll get a motion to approve the quote from Great Lakes. Or I take that back from Ferguson Waterworks. Yes, Ferguson Waterworks. So moved. I'll second that. I'll second that. <laughs> Great. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 The chair votes aye. Thank you. 5.3 review the lead copper sampling results. So every three years, the utility is required to test for lead and copper uh, due, uh, by DNR and EPA. And uh, this year we had 30 test sites. And again, the lake water has undetectable lead and, and copper levels in it. And the water leaving the plant also has undetectable lead and copper levels in it. But because uh, private service lines and in-home plumbing is made out of lead and copper and lead solder, we test for these uh, uh, elements within homes, that kitchen faucet. So you have there a list of the 30 sites that we tested this year. We provide the sample kits and actually the homeowners take the, the samples for us. Um, The results to the right are shown in order, 30 being the highest lead results and one being the lowest result that came in. And we're regulated at the 90th percentile level, which is shown in, I think that's yellow. Mm -hmm. yep. Color challenged, yellow or orange. And you'll see our 90th percentile this year was 4.00 parts per billion. And the action level is the 90th percentile of 15 parts per billion. So we're well below the action level in lead and copper. Uh, last year, our, or three years ago, our lead result was more like 8.5. And that was due to one sample that was not collected properly. Someone had not been using the water, allowed it to sit in the lateral. It was a vacant apartment came and took a sample and that resulted in an unusually high sample, but we're not allowed to throw out samples. So we included that one and that skewed our results last time a bit higher. But this result is uh, more in keeping with prior uh, years. Just by example, Madison Water Utility, even though they've removed all lead service lines, they still end up with a 90th percentile result that's typically two, three or four parts per billion due to interior plumbing that may not have been changed out, solder, things like that. Um, we did have, well, I should say these are 30 uh, full length lead uh, laterals. We had seven new locations. Sometimes people move and, and the subsequent owner doesn't want to cooperate or participate. So we did have seven new sites that kind of helps our statistics. Um, 30, 30 sites out of however many homes in, in the city is a small number, but this is the, the regulatory um, specification. But seven of these sites were new, so that helps uh, widen the statistics a, a bit. Um, so we were happy with these results. We did have one location that had a lead level that was above the action limit, just a single point. Um, in a case like that, whenever we become aware of a site like that, we're now going to put them into our lead service line replacement program because that's 
uh, a site uh, that needs to be replaced. So we've been in communication with that property owner um, and uh, we will uh, enforce the 18 month time frame to have that replaced, offer them a grant of up to $2,500 and a no interest loan to remove that lead service line permanently. Um, but overall, the results were reassuring that our orthophosphate treatment is keeping lead levels down uh, below standards, and, and we have no further, uh, the results of this testing leads to no further compliance issues with the DNR or the EPA. Everything is in conformance. Good. Good. Any further questions on that? No, I'm good. Do you, do you have any any feel for why this one home is a little bit higher? You know, is it's that, so site specific, Mark. It could be a little bit longer lateral. You know, she might not have flushed water through there in the same way as other. There's a lot of variables, so I, no, I can't really say why. That's quite dramatically higher than any of the other samples? Yeah, I can say la the last go around, three years ago, that site had a high sample as well, but it was half of that result. Okay. So if, I, when we, if, if they replace that lateral, they, will they remain in the testing program? No, then we have to kick them off. <laughs> okay. So once they no longer have lead, we have to remove them. All right, on to the Steemit Avenue water main project. Need approval for the materials. Yes, you should have a quote. The, uh, I apologize, we didn't break out all the items, but it's <clears throat> a number of uh, fittings and a small amount of water main pipe for Salmon Avenue, one block. And we're we're voting to accept Ferguson Waterworks according with uh, the recommendation and the fact that they were the lowest bid. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so we'll move. Uh, I will second I that. Second Any questions? <laughs> Take your choice on that, Joel. Uh, okay. One question I would have is, is this a 16 inch line that we we're talking about earlier? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, there's a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All right, shoreline protection. A big uh, Yeah. I wanted to report back. Um, last month we presented a, a quote uh, from Wagner excavating for uh, installation and materials to uh, rehab our damaged shoreline protection area. And after further review, I determined that we, under state bidding law, did need to bid that out and treat that as a construction project. And I think we decided, uh, due to timing of that, we would prefer to purchase the materials and make the installation ourselves with the crew. Um, then we're simply purchasing materials. It's not a construction project. We're providing the labor ourselves. Um, so uh, Wagner then requested to quote the materials. Uh, and we also have a quote from Keel Sand and Gravel. And at uh, our, my last reading, the Keel Sand and Gravel quote was, was less than the other quote. So we're expecting to go forward with that in the very near future. And we do have um, Collins Engineering out of Milwaukee is, is kind of a shoreline expert. Uh, we're going to have someone from their firm up to give us, lend a little expertise in the placement of the materials. Um, the, the way you place the stuff is, is critical to ensuring some longevity because uh, we know we, we've got two ton boulders there that have just been relocated by the wave action. So we want to be sure we're doing this in the best way possible. So I'm expecting 
that to move forward in the next month. Can any of the ones that are in the water be reclaimed at all or not? They can and, and they will be. That's part of the plan. Okay. All right. So we don't need, uh, I guess we do need repairs to, or a motion to approve or not? No, there was a motion last month. I just wanted to report back on that. All right. So we don't need a motion for that now. So with the current plans, Joe, is, would that be considered O&M work versus um, capital work? I would consider that O&M work, Mark. I'm not, a, I'm not an accountant, but I, I would call it O&M. Yeah, OK. All right, next we've got the approval of the uh, cross-connection inspection contract. Yeah, so under the state, either the utility or the municipality must implement cross-connection control program. And the municipality uh, was not interested in doing that when we began, uh, I don't know, eight years ago, six years ago. So the program is implemented by the water utility. And cross-connections are plumbing arrangements that could potentially allow foreign materials to come back into the potable water system. You know, like the prime example is always a slop sink in a basement that's full of dirty water and somebody has a hose extension in the water to the tap outlet and under the right conditions of the distribution system, some of that water could get sucked into the housing house plumbing and be a cross connection. So uh, the company that we use to uh, uh, assist us with the commercial and industrial plumbing arrangements, which are very complicated, is, has been Hydro Corporation. Uh, we do the residential inspections. It's a very limited inspection, but we do that part of the program ourselves. But Hydro Corp does everything with the companies uh, and industries. Uh, and you'll see we've got a proposed two-year contract. Um, under which they would conduct 960 inspections. The frequency is all dictated by the state, so they're not coming up with their own cycle. It's di dictated by the state. And they've got a figure here, which is uh, about, uh, I forgot what, a little over $100 an in, in inspection. Mm -hmm. And that includes all the communication, getting it set up, so they can't just appear and say, we're here to help you. They, have to lay the groundwork to get in. Um, and we would certainly recommend continuing to work with them. They've been an outstanding partner in this effort. And they basically provide the backflow preventers? Uh, they do not. They advise the companies what should be done. And then the companies have to engage a plumbing contractor to do the actual work. And then a lot of guys that, are these the same guys that have come into my office the past yes. couple of years just to check the, the one sink in the basement? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm good. We got backflow preventers. Don't have to worry. <laughs> I think a lot of the heavy lifting has been done in earlier years because the first time they come through, they catch a lot of problems and companies then... Uh, over time address those issues. So the next go around, usually there's fewer issues. Okay. All right. Any PSC code change? Well, I guess you, we need approval. So we need a motion to approve that. Yes. Want to go, Tom? <laughs> I'll, I'll make the motion that we approve. Okay. I'll second. All right. All in favor <laughs> say aye. 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 And share both sides. Now we're going to get Tom's name in the minutes, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Any PSC code changes, Joe? No. Okay. And I will move to approve the vouchers. I'll second that. Any discussion on the vouchers? Paying an awful lot of money to Alliant Energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those buggers. <laughs> All those retirement benefits. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> not going to me. I didn't get hired. I'm getting my retirement from uh, Wisconsin Electric. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a motion and a second to approve the vouchers. All in favor, say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. All right, plans for COVID-19 risk reduction. I don't have any new information there. We're still uh, running our plan. You know, I think everybody's aware uh, the issue is still there. And in fact, at some level, the county is uh, kind of increasing their activities and, and such. And I think we at the utility very early had a, a, a strong plan in place and we're getting a lot of work done. Uh, we have had two or maybe three individuals in contact with a positive case, and we did put those individuals on 14 day of COVID leave. Um, and it turned out they did not have the virus, which was good. But one of the challenges I think we're all aware of, even if you get a test, first of all, there's limited testing. And second of all, uh, that test is just at one point in time. Um, so we still are keeping people out of the workplace if they've had a positive contact. And I would say even in the case of family members that had a direct contact with a positive case, as an employer, we've not been contacted by the county for any kind of tracing. So we're kind of having to rely on individuals reporting, which you know, they, they are, um, but other than that aspect, we are, are maintaining our plan and we're providing full service. And I think we're in a good position to weather whatever happens this fall. And hopefully not a lot. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. All right, next on the agenda is just to schedule our next meeting which, uh, according to my calendar, would be September 21st. If I were to voice the preference, I do prefer the 3.30 time to 3 o'clock time. And uh, again, it's Finance Committee, um, is that what it was? Or was it Protection and Safety that was, that's meeting after this? Yeah, normally Monday council is a meeting and, and it's not uncommon to have a meeting, you know, shortly ahead of council. Okay. Yeah, I would just assume 3.30 as well if we can do it. And I mean, sure. we can I think it's an hour and a half for our meetings for the most part, especially the fact that we're getting a lot of the information ahead of time. And um, right. we can kind of limit some discussion and things like that at a, a meeting such as this. So. Yeah, 3.30 works for me. Okay. So we set it at 3.30 on the 21st of September? And the first, the uh, third Monday, whatever that works out to be. That would be the 21st of September. Okay. All right. Great. With that, there's only one more motion to make. So moved. I second it. Oh, go ahead, Tom. You can second it. I'll second it. <laughs> all, in, all in favor, say aye. And thank you aye. for putting up aye. with my technical disabilities. Oh, you're, good. Okay. you're making strides. Well, yeah, by, <laughs> by September 21st, maybe I'll have this figured out. Maybe it's yeah. just my hardware, too. Who knows? I would bet it's a setting. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have a say. Again, I didn't get a chance to check the audio settings at all. Just kind of. Got the camera up on the monitor here and the way, the way we went. So, all right, very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh -huh.